So recently I was doing some fun hacking stuff on Hack the Box and I generally always use my own VM or virtual machine. Well, I wanted to change it up. And I know that Hack the Box has a virtual machine in the cloud in your web browser called the Pwn Box. Now I really haven't used it that much, but I thought, hey, let me try it out. Let me see how bad the Pwn Box is. I'll just be real with you. I did not have high hopes for it. Generally speaking, my experience with browser-based VMs is they're very buggy, they are not smooth, the performance is bad. So that's sort of what I was expecting. But I was pleasantly surprised. The Pwn Box was actually really smooth. In this video, I wanna give you a quick overview of my experience and also let me be clear. This video is not sponsored by Hack the Box. Now, Hack the Box, if you want to sponsor one of my videos, you know how to reach out to me. Let's talk. But truly, this is not sponsored by them in any way. These are my honest thoughts of using the Pwn Box. And hey, you might notice there's some chat on the screen. I am making this video while I'm live streaming. If you've never been part of my live stream, you are missing out. Make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell notification so that you are notified the next time I am live and you can be part of the live studio audience with all of the 70 plus amazing people watching right now. Hey, real quick, if you appreciate my content, one of the best ways you can support me is by enrolling in one of my courses or become a member over on Ko-Fi. I currently have three courses available right now. The first one is Introduction to Hacking Methodology. If you are new to offensive security and CTFs and ethical hacking, this course is for you. It's beginner level, but will bring you up to speed rather quickly. My second course is Introduction to AWS Pen Testing. This will take you from beginner level to intermediate in the field of AWS Pen Testing and Cloud Pen Testing. And finally, my latest course is Hands on Phishing. This will teach you to do full phishing campaigns from the perspective of a pen tester or a red teamer. I cover everything from purchasing domains to configuring DNS and TLS to using GoFish and Evil Jinx to do full phishing campaigns to bypassing MFA to even spoofing telephone numbers so you can do pretext calling alongside of phishing. And over on Ko-Fi, I have resume reviews, mock interviews, different membership levels, and you can even get my courses on Ko-Fi a little bit cheaper just due to the revenue share. So hey, whether you purchase my course on Simply Cyber Academy or over on Ko-Fi, that really is the best way you can support me. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me and hey, enjoy the rest of this video. But we are just getting started to solve Retro 2 over on Hack the Box and I wanna try using the Pwn Box on stream. So first to access the Pwn Box, you are limited in some ways. With the free Hack the Box account, I believe you're limited to maybe 24 hours. I do have a VIP plus sub to Hack the Box, which means I get unlimited access to the Pwn Box. So I already had this as a feature, I just never really dug into it myself. But to access the Pwn Box in the top right corner when you're logged into Hack the Box, you click Lab Access and you would click Launch the machine. Now I've already done this, so I'm gonna click into my Pwn Box machine. You can see it right here and I'm gonna click Open Desktop. Now there's a few cool things about the Pwn Lab or the Pwn Box, rather not Pwn Lab, a Pwn Box machine that I find super helpful. I'm gonna open up the terminal here and as you can see, it's Parrot OS on the back end. So you may have heard of Kali. Parrot is another offensive security Linux distribution. I'm gonna make this full, but it's a Parrot OS distro customized for Hack the Box. Has all the main tools that you need to solve most of the Hack the Box machines. The reason I say most is some machines do require a Windows VM, especially Sherlock's and things like that. So it doesn't work for all of them, but for your standard boot to root machine on Hack the Box, the Pwn Box should have everything that you need in order to solve them. But one cool feature, if I do LSLA, I'm here in my home directory or my, yeah, my, my normal user's home directory. And there's a few neat things here if I can find them, although I think it's on my desktop. So I'm gonna CD over to my desktop, do LS, and you can see on the desktop, there is a folder called my data. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this. So we have my data right here on the desktop. If I CD over to my data, LS LA, you can actually create your, your own user init script which means you can have tools and things that last persistently across sessions. Now, when your Pwn Box machine ends, you of course lose anything on that, but anything you put into my data is actually saved persistently across reboots. So for example, from my GitHub, I have an offensive security repo. 
Well, every time I launch the poem box, this is already loaded in here because I saved it into the my data folder on poem box. So this is persistent across reboot. So I have all my custom scripts saved here. If I back out a directory, do user.init, you can see I added Rust scan here as well as a binary. It looks like I was solving the puppy machine on Hack the Box and I left the folder there so I could come back to the data, but I'll show you kind of the user in it. If I cat out the user in it, there's not a whole lot that I'm doing here, but you can add any scripts that you want here. So every time your Poem Box instance launches, it will run these scripts. So the one script I'm doing here is just installing Rust Scan so that Rust Scan is ready to go when I'm solving machines and I'm installing Dir Search so that Dir Search is also ready when I'm ready to solve machines. If I CD over to my web server, I have only linps here, but my goal behind this is as I have common tools, so linps, winps, things like that, that I commonly transfer to attack machines, I figured, hey, I can save all of these to web server, and then I can start up a Python web server right here when I am wanting to transfer those and all of my files are in one folder. So truly the thing that really stood out to me is the fact that we have this my data where you can add things that are saved persistently across reboots. I haven't seen other platforms do this with their cloud-based VMs and was one of my issues why I always use my own VM because I don't have to re, I don't like resetting up and reinstalling tooling every time I dive into a new VM. The other thing is guys, notice how smooth this is. Now, the smoothness of it might be due to my own internet connection. I have fiber into my home. I have very good internet. But if you have good internet, the attack box is incredibly smooth. So if I'll open up Firefox real quick, we'll let it open up. But I mean, this is the same performance, honestly, sometimes better than using my own VM. Things are fast, things are smooth. We can scroll through here. There's very little input lag. I'll click in the path and just show you guys as we click around how smooth the poem box actually is. So honestly, kudos to the Hack the Box team. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised by the quality of the Poem Box. And now what we are going to do on the live stream is begin working through the Retro 2 machine using the Poem Box. This will be a series of videos on my YouTube channel. So if you wanna see me use the Poem Box to try to solve some Hack the Box machines, just make sure you check out some upcoming videos and you will get exactly that. But hey, I would love to hear from you. Have you ever tried to use the Poem Box? And if you had, what was your experience? Has it gotten better? Was it bad in the beginning? I really don't know, and I would love to hear from you. For me personally, I'm gonna begin using it a lot more just to experiment with and see what it's like. And as a pen tester, there's also some power to using a new VM every once in a while. Now, generally in a pen test, you get to use your own VM, but at least a handful of times every year, I have to use a VM configured by the client. This might be a Kali or a Parrot machine configured in their environment, and I have to dive in and be able to reset up most of my tooling. So if you rely on a very customized version of Kali or Parrot, that's not gonna be good when you fall into that environment. So if you can very quickly configure a VM with the tooling that you need to do a CTF or a pen test, that will help you in the long way. So jumping into a pwn box or attack machine, some cloud-based VM every once in a while helps you stay up to top on your skills and getting things installed and configured. But honestly, let me know. We'll love to hear your thoughts. I do my best to read every single comment for good or for bad. So let me know in the comment section what you think and I'll catch you guys in the next one.